Greetings. Today is Friday, September 27, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I will be discussing several disturbances we will be monitoring over the next few days, which have the potential for cyclonic development either in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico or the Western Caribbean Sea. Additionally, I will talk about a few tropical waves emerging from Africa that also have cyclonic development potential. On another note, I wanted to mention that this week, the Atlantic has been very active. We had Hurricane Helene, which reached Category 4 and affected the southeastern United States, where it has been reported that 38 people have died due to the hurricane's effects. Hurricane Helene has definitely caused devastation across the states of Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina. Moreover, in the last few days, we have provided special coverage related to Tropical Storm John, which continues to affect some states in Mexico, including Guerrero, Michoacan, Colima, and soon Nayarit, where heavy rains and floods persist. Unfortunately, extensive damage has been reported in parts of Mexico, with at least 16 people confirmed dead. It has been quite a difficult week in the Americas. Additionally, Hurricane Isaac has formed far north in the Atlantic, but fortunately, it is expected to stay over open waters. Meanwhile, Tropical Storm Kirk formed today, and it is moving west-northwest, eventually heading over open Atlantic waters, posing no threat to the Caribbean. However, it is crucial that residents of western Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Gulf Coast states stay alert for a strong tropical wave moving through the Caribbean. Once it reaches the western Caribbean, it may encounter marginally favorable conditions for cyclonic development. Unfortunately, the same regions that were affected by Hurricane Helene may have to stay on alert again for another system that threatens to develop into a tropical cyclone in the region. Meanwhile, a few strong tropical waves will emerge from Africa, and we will be discussing their development potential and possible trajectories over the next 7 to 10 days. Let's look at the latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center. As of today, the chances of cyclonic development have increased to 30% just east of Nicaragua and Honduras, and east of the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize. This is associated with a low-pressure system that could develop east of Nicaragua and take a northwestward path. Furthermore, the chances of another tropical wave that recently left Africa have also increased to 30%. With the system currently over the Cape Verde Islands, having a 30% chance of development over the next seven days. Let's first discuss the Western Caribbean region. If we zoom in on the infrared satellite animation, we can see a strong tropical wave bringing some showers over Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. The wave's axis will continue moving west over the coming days and is projected to interact with a developing low-pressure system east of Nicaragua, potentially leading to the formation of a tropical depression. We can see this in the latest global model projections. Let's start with the GFS model. Here we have the tropical wave passing just south of the Dominican Republic and Jamaica, and it's not until the middle of next week that the GFS model develops a low-pressure system heading toward the Yucatan Peninsula. In the long term, in about seven to nine days, it develops into a tropical storm or hurricane just south of Louisiana. However, remember this is a long-range forecast, so we don't yet know which Gulf Coast state might be impacted by a cyclone. The first thing to watch is whether a low-pressure system develops in the Western Caribbean, and we will have many days to monitor this. We also have the European model, which shows a similar forecast to the GFS, but this time the model consolidates the low pressure just south of Pinar del Rio in Cuba, where it eventually moves into the Gulf of Mexico. Although this model keeps the low pressure relatively weak as it approaches Texas, we will be keeping an eye on any changes in the projections. We also have the German model, which shows a low pressure system north of the Yucatan by Wednesday morning, as well as the UK model, which also shows a low-pressure system north of the Yucatan Peninsula between Wednesday and Thursday of next week. I agree with this 30% development chance, and I don't think the chances will increase today. However, we will be watching closely for any changes in the projections. The important thing is that residents from western Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Belize should monitor the progress of this potential low-pressure system developing over the next few days. As I mentioned, in the long term, we really don't know where this low-pressure system might head. The same goes for the European model ensemble members. Some of them develop a tropical depression or storm as it passes near or over the Yucatan Peninsula by mid to late next week. Lastly, let's talk a bit about the tropical Atlantic, where we have Tropical Storm Kirk, which will continue its path northward, far from the Caribbean. However, in the medium to long term, it's important to monitor the potential development of two additional tropical waves. The one currently over the Cape Verde Islands, as marked by the National Hurricane Center, is likely to follow a similar path to Tropical Storm Kirk, gaining latitude quickly and not posing a threat to the Caribbean. However, another tropical wave will emerge from Africa in the coming days, and we will be paying close attention to it since it could encounter favorable development conditions. Even though most GFS ensemble members keep the system on a northward path, posing no threat to the Caribbean, it's still important to monitor this next wave, as some models, including European ensemble members, 
have it on a much lower latitude path that could approach the Northeast Caribbean in the long term. But again, we are talking about a forecast beyond seven days, so a lot can change in the coming days. The most important thing here is that residents of western Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, and eventually the Gulf Coast states should continue to monitor this tropical wave, which could develop into a low-pressure system. That's all for today's tropical forecast update. To make sure you don't miss any of the videos I'll be recording in the coming days, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to get alerts when I upload new videos. I hope you all have an excellent weekend. And to our followers in the southeastern United States and the states of Guerrero, Michoacan, and Colima, we wish you a speedy recovery from the disasters of this past week. I'll record the next video tomorrow. See you later.